All right, what I'm illustrating is uh, Chrysler's O2 heater circuits and their time to activity test that the computer uses to monitor the heater circuit. Chrysler uses a five volt bias that runs to each of their O2 sensors. And you see I got my upstreams and my downstreams. So I wanna show you how fast the upstreams warm up compared to the downstreams. The downstream has actually a relay that controls the power to them which delays the turn on of it. And so what I'm gonna do I'm going to take that relay out for the downstream sensors, effectively eliminating the heater circuit for the downstream sensors. So there is no power right now with this relay I just took out in my hand. The downstream sensors do not have power on the heater circuit. I want to show you what happens comparing the two on how they warm up time to activity, okay? So go ahead and start the car. And what you're going to see with the car started, the upstream O2s are going to start to drop. And they're gonna start they're gonna start dropping pretty rapidly. And you see a difference between the upstream and downstream right now. The downstreams the downstream sensors, what you're looking at would be what the computer would see if the heater circuit was screwed up. Notice they're staying at near five volts. Cold engine bias voltage on these are, are five volts and, and warm engine closed loop is a half a volt. There you go, there's your switch right there. And that bias just changed to around a half a volt and now your O2s became active. Notice the downstream sensors are still high voltage. Hold your RPM up, let's use the exhaust to heat them up. What's going to happen is there's not enough exhaust gas unless you're at higher RPM. You see those coming back up? How important is a heater circuit when the O2 sensors are located further away from the exhaust manifold? What you're going to have with a heater circuit problem with, on O2s that are located far away is you're going to have a false rich signal all the time, which the computer's going to do what? It's going to take fuel away and you're going to have a drivability problem at times. Run good cold run good wide open throttle. Times where you're cruising on the highway, you'd probably be okay, but you come off the highway where you don't have as much exhaust gas flow, sensor cools off and does what those bottom two do. Computer takes all your fuel away on your fuel trim numbers. I've seen it happen from a blown fuse on a heater circuit. That's what happens right there. I'm gonna plug this relay back in. Let's see what happens. This is the downstream heater control relay. I just plugged that in and you'll see how important the heater circuit is on an O2 sensor, why that sensor's got to be hot to work. You got a bad signal on an O2 sensor, it's not good enough to just look at the O2 signal circuit, you have to look at the heater circuit too. Okay, so I showed uh, the effect on this Chrysler with a heater circuit problem. Again, Chrysler using five volt bias with a cold engine for what purpose? Heater circuit monitoring, okay? With a warm engine, it changes its bias to around a half a volt. Cold engine bias, five volt. Warm engine bias, a half a volt. What this does, this causes major confusion in this field because what's the result of an open in the signal? Let's say you have a dead O2, one sensor's bad. Open, the sensor circuit is open internally, bad sensor. What does the signal voltage read on that sensor all the time? It's high volts. It'll actually read five volts on the signal circuit. Why? Because that circuit's not warmed up, right? 
uh, there's no continuity to ground. That's what pulls this down. When these, you can see them now as we're looking at the screen, they're actually cooling off. And as the sensor cools off, I don't even have the engine running, but as the sensor cools off, its resistance is rising. And so you see that bias voltage coming back high. Same result with an open in one of these circuits, you'll have high voltage. And what's the computer do? It'll actually flag a trouble code that says O2 circuit sorted to voltage. And you think you have a problem on that circuit with a, a, a wire crossed in causing that code, and it's not. It's, it's almost a, a, a dumb system not knowing that it's, it's affecting itself. It's an open in the O2 that causes that. So the symptoms would be this. You're test driving the car. What will happen? O2 signal will be fixed around 500 millivolts. This is Chrysler. On your test drive, you'll notice after it stays around 500 for 30 seconds or so, the computer switches the bias back to five, almost goes through a heater check on itself. Remember, every number above 450 is rich, so what's the computer do regardless of its 500 millivolts or five volts? What's the computer start doing with the fuel? Starts taking it away, right? So you're on a cruise, you're on a test drive, and you start seeing negative 25. Sometimes I've seen on a Dodge truck a negative 50% fuel trim on the short term and long term fuel trim. I've seen it from this kind of condition. And it, it causes big confusion. People don't realize uh, it's just an O2 sensor that causes that. So it's all tied in with this bias voltage circuit. Uh, and you see the effects of temperature resistance on these sensors. Uh, back to the test and what we looked at, that time to activity, this would be how a non-computer controlled heater circuit, which these are, is monitored for activity. It's a mandatory OBD2 that the heater circuits must be monitored, and it's doing it by using bias voltage as its monitor. How long does it take for that bias voltage to drop from five volts down to a half a volt, that's your time to activity. Remember our downstream sensors? When I unplugged that relay, what'd they do? They stayed up real high, didn't they? That would have failed, you get a trouble code from that. So, O2 bias voltage on a Chrysler, heater circuit on a Chrysler, 2003 Jeep Liberty. The other thing I wanted to show you is uh, circuit integrity testing, where if you had voltage that was fixed high all the time, and uh, we're gonna use this bias voltage to help us, again, and on the scan tool, of course, you see, we're going to focus on this right upstream one. That's the one I'm connected to. You see 4.96 volts here and 4 volts here. Uh, one thing to show you first is when I disconnect my scope from it, you see the voltage over here just return back to almost 5 volts. And so that shows you how weak of a voltage signal this is. This 5 volt bias line that you're looking at is such a weak signal that when I connect up a 10 mega ohm impedance digital meter to this, it's enough to pull the voltage down by one volt. One volt. From 4.98 down to four volts, I'll do it again, show it to you. You see that meter pulling that to ground. That's a snap on Varus or the, basically the, uh, the scan tool you're looking at, not the scope, but I am connecting the scope part of the tool and that's what you see. Weak signal. I could probably touch that with my finger and this is now using my body and touch ground and I can pull it down even further. And you see the, this is through my body, what do we do? I pulled it all the way down to a half a volt. That's through my body and you figure from one arm to the other, you know, you're, like, you're talking hundreds of thousands of ohms of resistance. How strong of a five volt signal is that? Is it the same kind of five volt signal that you'd see on a, say a throttle position sensor or a map sensor? It's not, I could touch those all day long and run them through my body and nothing changes. It stays at five volts. So kind of gives you an idea of, of how weak this signal is and, and how can we send five volts to a sensor and then the sensor makes a voltage and kind of counters it. I think that helps answer that a little bit. Very, very weak signal. Okay, But what I just showed you right there really is how you do a circuit integrity test. If I'm just looking at scan data, and let's say the scenario is you have a fixed high O2 signal, you could have an open in the harness somewhere, you could have a bad O2, and what I just showed you is how to address that. You take that wire, and all I'm doing, 
see if I can show you. All right, so all I'm doing is I have the black wire again, 2003 Jeep Liberty, same wiring as that 94 Honda Accord we did. Black wire is a signal. I have the black wire T-pinned, and I just have a jumper wire extended because my leads aren't long enough. And so that jumper wire is connected up top using my scope lead, and, and that's what's connected up to, to my meter, and all I was doing was, was just simply taking this jumper wire and touching it with this hand and uh, touch my other hand on battery ground. Hold that. Over here. See my finger? That's all I'm doing. Through my body. Now I'll go back to the scanner. And what do we see on the scanner with my hand connected? We see that drop to zero. I take my hand off the battery and you see that thing jump back up high. Okay? So if you do that test, how's the integrity of the wiring? If you had fixed five volts on the computer, possible bad sensor, possible open in the sensor harness, go to the sensor connector, harness side, take that circuit, jump it to ground through your body, watch your scan data drop to near zero volts, how's the integrity of the wiring from the computer all, all the way to the sensor? Good, good. And, and if you had a fixed high voltage O2 signal, what do you need? You need a sensor. Of course, we need to check sensor ground before we make that call, make sure you don't have an open in the sensor ground that could also do this too. But that's it. Circuit integrity using scan data.